Now, let's shift focus and talk about the commission of inquiry, uh, you know, looking into the violence that characterized the Ayawaso West Wagon by election. Joseph Akable is our man uh, planted within the commission. Not exactly. He's <laughs> like a <laughs> mole. Reporting, <laughs> reporting the more. for us. Yeah, the more for us. Uh, there. Joseph, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, welcome, so Joseph. The Thank commission you. was on break. Yes. For, uh, for was it first was for the state of the nation address. That was the official reason. So I was gave. right. You were right. Okay. Yes. But for Friday, the commission said that it was for uh, some reasons that they couldn't disclose. They couldn't sit on Friday. But mm -hmm. for Thursday, it was specifically for the state of the nation address. Let, let me let me make a uh, let me make a guess. It was to allow us reflect on the state of the nation address. I that's not it, official. That's, fair. <laughs> that's, <fair. laughs> that's Mamavi's connotation. <laughs> okay, but the commission is back today. Yes. Yeah. What's the plan? Uh, so first, um, you remember Colonel Mike Lopoku? Uh, he is the Director of Operations at the National Security Secretariat. Um, he appeared before the commission, and that was the first time he had the video of the uh, violence that marred the election being played at the commission and to the general public that we're viewing uh, from various locations. And he had described the video as doctored, and the commission had asked that he submits uh, he, the video that he had seen initially. Mm. Uh, his view was that what he saw initially compared to what was played and the narration attached to it, it doesn't reflect the situation on the day. So the commission asked him to bring his videos to the commission. And it kept coming up and uh, again, because there were some sound bites that he also claimed he had received, uh, showing people threatening to harm his men, uh, which the commission again asked him to provide them with that. Mm. So due to that number of evidence that kept coming back to the same point about something that he had that the commission didn't have, the commission felt that uh, before they even start questioning him. You recall the counsel to the commission had completed, leading him to give evidence. Uh, so the next step was that the commission had to ask questions of him, but they decided that they want to have access to all the evidence before they continue with that. So that he will be the first person that we expect uh, to appear before the commission today. The other individuals are uh, uh, some media practitioners. Uh, there is Bernard Avle of CTFM. He's supposed to appear. There is also a Paul Adomotri of Metro TV. He's also um, expected to appear before the commission. And there is also... Um, Chief Superintendent Chrissy Fori, uh, he's the Director of Operations for the Accra Region. Uh, he had been mentioned by the East Legon District Commander about having a hand in uh, assigning the men for the day and how he left the East Legon District Commander out of the entire and the Legon yes, uh, so, Commander as well. Yes, yeah, so he's okay. supposed to also testify before the Commission. So are they appearing, uh, you know, the way that we, we've arranged them this morning? Is that in how terms we... of the arrangement, um, this CEO, uh, Chief Superintendent Chris Fury is supposed to come after 12. Okay. Uh, they're supposed to be Kenal Opoku who is supposed to start. Uh, so after Kenal Opoku, then uh, the media practitioners. So this is a comeback of Kenal Opoku? Yes. So okay. he's the, this is the first time it's actually happening in terms of those who have testified before the commission so far. Mm. And, uh, but there are a, a number of pending issues before the commission. Uh, one has to do with the ruling, uh, the application that was made by lawyers for the NDC parliamentary candidates. Dominic Ayani. Yes, they were asking to be allowed to recall witnesses that have already testified and also be able to cross-examine, re-examine their own witness mm. who had also testified. So maybe within this week we may get a ruling from the commission. And the other one is a petition that was sent to the commission asking that uh, the former president, now the NDC flag bearer, mm. should be invited to testify before the commission. Uh, which the last time we checked with the commission, uh, they said it had been received. Um, but they had to take an action on that. So those are some of the pending issues before the commission. Mm. You know, the number of people that uh, go to the hearing, has it increased from the first day? Uh, because I, I realize, even as we show on television, that this time around there are reactions from within uh, the hall where the, where the hearing is, is, is ongoing. There are people either laughing or making... Has it changed? What's the atmosphere usually? I think it, it mostly has to do with, um, it depends on who is coming mm. and at how close their witnesses are to each other. So when you have maybe four witnesses in a day, it means that you're more likely to have all the four to be within a premise at the same time. So mm. in that case, you have people who come along with them uh, who will be allowed into the room, but maybe their witness may not be allowed. So that is what we saw in the last two, three days, and that was what caused uh, the reaction that you saw. But ordinarily, you just have uh, the commissioners and the journalist and the witness and those who accompany the witnesses. Mm. But when you have multiple witnesses come to the location at the same time, that is when those who accompany them uh, tend to come in and you see the reactions uh, that we see uh, on TV when you're watching on TV in terms of how they react to what is being said by the various witnesses. Mm. So it's more of the closeness of the witnesses to each other. Okay. Mm. 
Um, in, in normal court settings and in other jurisdictions as well, o opinion is given about maybe the line of questioning of various members of the commission. Uh, there will be members of the commission, so to speak. Uh, and uh, do we have any of such opinion either dominating discussion platforms or other media platforms, so to say? I think so far we, we have a sense of um, the kind of questions each of the commissioners ask. So if you pick uh, the former IGP, um, Patrick Quartin Champon, he tends to draw more on the ideal police practice. So he's looking at the procedure because he's familiar with the police system. He wants to ask uh, mostly the police officers whether they followed what the standard procedure they're supposed to follow in such situations. And mostly he wants to also get a sense of the way forward. He more mostly asks the progressive questions, trying to find out what will you recommend, what will you recommend. If you pick a Justice Short and Professor Henry Tamen Sabonsu, uh, they first try to understand the testimony given by the witness. And there are some number of questions that I've run through in terms of their engagement with the witnesses. Uh, the first has to do with the cause of the violence, uh, that is the shooting incident, what sparked it. Every individual that has come in, they've asked the person that specific question. Uh, the number of gunshots, uh, that where, was it, where were the gunshots heard from? Mm. They keep asking that particular question. Then they try to probe further and pick the witnesses' thoughts on uh, this whole subject of vigilantism or political party militia uh, groups and how they think it could be dealt with. Uh, so those are the kind of questions that Justice Short and Professor Nwita Mensah tend to ask more often than not. And you get the sense that they are trying to reconstruct what actually happened to have a fair assessment and be able to report on the incidents of the day. So when someone comes in and gives a narrative, another person comes, they tend to ask uh, the person who is currently before them whether he, when you hear this narrative, whether you agree or disagree with it, uh, so that the commission will be able to understand what exactly happened. Because, I mean, mind you, the, the terms of reference, the very first one the commission needs to do is to establish what exactly happened on the same day. Uh, we've had lots of reports mm -hmm. whether ammunitions were being stockpiled or not. All those are issues that the commission will have to arrive at some conclusion on. Uh, 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 any of them? or even the independent observers, uh, people like you will be independent, of course, uh, in two minds or perhaps not too sure about the consistency and um, the synchronization of the testimonies uh, or perhaps the responses. If you, if you get to know that all of them come from one side, either in, from the security sector, etc., in relation to what happened. Even as, even as observers <laughs> yeah. uh, monitoring the process, <laughs> we've, we've seen and heard a lot of inconsistencies. Yes, yes, we have. yes. Yeah. yes. And uh, I mean, and my, what, what makes it interesting is that these are narratives that are supposed to be coming from one source. So yeah, I, I, I think the security apparatus. Yes, and, and more importantly from a single source because when, the, when you pick the um, interior minister, for him when he came, he said he doesn't know the people, so he is quite different from it. But if you pick the two national security ministers, they kept making reference to the commander, Samuel Azugu, and the director of operations. Hmm. And ma mind you, the commander is the That's primary source of information. Uh, that's, 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 that's the director of operations. Kenalo, Kenalo but um, the DSP, Samuel Azugu, is the primary source of information for all those within the security agency. Because he led the operation. He led the operations. In fact, the director of operations, when he was testifying, made reference to him. So you've heard issues of uh, what may have caused the violence itself. So for instance, uh, Samuel Azugu says uh, they met the guys on the road towards the house. They told them to move away, the guys who were riding a motorbike. Now, when the guys moved behind the building, they now had one gunshot there, then they rushed there to the place. Now, if you pick the two national security ministers who came in, uh, they told the commission that the gentleman went to the house to try and check on the arms. They got to the door, the gate was locked. They couldn't get access to the building. That was when they had a gunshot inside. So, okay, so, so there's one narrative that says that there was one gunshot that was heard. That inside. led to the six of them going... Okay. Yes. Because the, because on the park they when they they rounded the building, yeah, that end of the building. That end of the building. Okay. To and that's where you get to go to the frontage of the of the house of the MP. Okay, I see. Interesting. Yeah, so that that that, that is an instance uh, where where it appears there's a bit of a, a, a disconnect. If you pick the others who have come to testify, I mean we've heard um it's only the National Security Minister, who initially was the first one to admit to his men using some form of violence that caused injuries. When the, first, the National Security Minister Kandapa came in, mm. he made no reference to that injuries that happened. He simply said that uh, his men fired six shots and at no point did uh, any of their gunshots injure mm. anyone. 
Uh, then another security, other national security minister comes in and makes the point that I mean, my men used some force while mm. they were trying to effect the arrest, mm. and they ended up uh, getting some people injured. And this was also confirmed by the director of operations for the national security as well. Uh, so th those are some of the issues that we've seen. And I mean, obviously those are the things that people keep looking out for yeah. in terms of the testimonies that come so far to try and just understand uh, what exactly happened. Very interesting. Uh, you know, whilst the NDC candidate then for the by-election. Uh, appeared before the commission, Professor Harry Tamens supposed to give a hint that they were going to go to the place to see yeah. all the references that he was making. Has there, have they fixed a date for that? In, in fact, that was, that was the second time that communication was coming from the commission. The first one, just the shot had indicated that it would be going. Uh, but what I understand happened on that day was uh, because concern had been raised that the marks on the tree, if they are not careful by the time the commission would go over, they may not be able to get it in a manner that mm. would depict what happened on that day. Uh, so um, the suggestion from the, sh the commission on that day was that they had some experts that are assisting the commission that okay. were to accompany him to the residence to okay. at least get first-hand information of the situation even before the commission goes properly. So we understand that that has been done already. Mm. Interesting. Uh, so Samson Lali uh, you know, who is a private legal practitioner, has added his voice to the cross uh, you know, for the commission to allow for cross-examination. Let's listen to, uh, you know, the analysis that he makes on this. Law, if one presents evidence and it is against you and that evidence is not interrogated, the value of that evidence is as useless as, you know, it's, it were not presented at all. So if you do not allow a person who is affected by the testimony of the other to interrogate that evidence, that evidence is left with no weight, you see. So it is actually in the interest of the commission itself to allow the process, particularly for persons, that there is the potential that the commission will make findings against them, favorably or unfavorably, but more especially adverse findings. And you ought to note that the findings of the commission have the potential of disabling and disqualifying an individual who appears before them from holding public office for life, from becoming an MP, from becoming a president, unless six months after those adverse findings and a, uh, a white paper has been released or a, an announcement has been made by the government that it does not intend to publish the, the report. Unless six months after that, that person has asserted their right to appeal in the Court of Appeal to overturn the decision of the Commission. Mm. So if the findings of the Commission, particularly when they are adverse, can have such impact okay, on an individual, they certainly must have a right. They certainly must have a right to interrogate the evidence that seeks to indict them. All right, that's uh, private legal practitioner Samsung Ladi Ayenini, um, you know, making the the call for the cross exit. So we'll see, they'll, you know, they'll come up with their judgments. Uh, that is, if, if if they are ready to give that, and mind you, what they requested uh, has to do with not just uh, re examine they want to be allowed to recall all other witnesses that have testified, okay. that have said something in relation and to And they get them cross examined. Point. Yes, so if that is granted, it means that uh, the National Security Minister, who had made reference to the parliamentary candidates, the, the, the lawyers should be allowed to recall him and ask mm. questions of him. So. Yeah, he also made reference to us, and, and, and you know, which we strongly disagree. Uh, and yeah, so Who made we, references? Also, uh, Kenel okay. Opoko. In terms of, I, I, yes, you know, I kind of have the... issues. So something has been shown to you, which is from a certain media house, not from us, even though they picked some footage, and it wasn't also exclusive to us, so they picked from other media houses and put together to do a report. And... You, you viewed it and you're making a comment, where is, where is Joy FM coming from? You know, to say that we reported that uh, two people had, had, been, mm. uh, had died. Anyway, that's <laughs> the, the... So the commission sits today at 10? At 10 a.m., yes. Okay, all right. Uh, there was something else that I, I... But just quickly before you go, just run us through those who are appearing, just before you go. Uh, so Colonel Mike Lopoku, Director of Operations for National Security Secretariat. Uh, there is also Chief Superintendent Kwesifori, uh, he's the Director of Operations for the Accra region. Then there is Bernard Avler of CTFM, 
a Paula Dumotri of uh, Metro TV. Yeah, so I was just going to say that the Ro whole Roland Walker is supposed to come later on. The cross examination. <laughs> later on, the, the, the whole cross examination <laughs> may just prolong because they've yeah, got 30 days yeah, to sit. And if yeah. we want to give the opportunity for everybody to cross yeah. examine each person, then it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I wanted to ask it, it, um, is everybody who is going to be called before? the commission going to be related to the incident or just for seeking professional experience or opinion? I think I think the two is, is, is it captures the two. Okay. okay. So first there are people who are supposed to have first hand information. Mm -hmm. And then those uh, who have those some, who, professional, some opinion. Opinion, professional opinion, yes. Okay. Because uh, we saw it in the case of in fact the parliamentary candidate himself who was invited, if you realize from his testimony, he didn't have first hand information. Mm -hmm. He was actually not at the scene when the incident happened. Mm. Then in terms of the journalists that have come in, mm. when advancements also went, you you heard questions being asked, and right from his responses, you know that uh, unlike you who will be testifying later on, uh, you were at the scene, so you mm. have first-hand information. So that is the difference between the okay. two. But obviously, aside from your first-hand information, you also have professional opinion. So Roland is expected to appear, I think, within a week. Yeah. Okay, on record, have you received any invitation from the commission? No, I have not. Okay, but no, they, are, they have contacted. That's it. Your <laughs> they have contacted is, um, us. Off to the True, commission. <laughs> off to the commission. We haven't had anything. They have contacted me through who? No, he's away. He's away. Joseph Akable is our court correspondent, <laughs> but he's reporting from the commission. Uh, it will be live on on air at yeah. 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. Sure yeah, miss, definitely. You, right you here. You don't the commission hearing. Thank you, Joseph Akable. You're you're mischievous. Who's also if you call me again, I'm not going to pick. Stay with us when we come back. Uh, there's a one woman um, in the creative arts industry. Wow. A woman wow. who is a producer who's an actress. Uh, she also does a lot of other things, so you can call her an entrepreneur. But she believes that we shouldn't just be spectators, but just as the president said, citizens. So she's going on a one, ma a one woman wow. uh, protest here yeah, on vigilantism. Across the country. Well, we'll hear wow. from her. I call, would you help her? Yeah. <laughs> Julian Asante is our guest after this. <laughs> Stay with us.